I'm going to show you five of my favorite Logic Pro tips and tricks to help take your production game in Logic Pro to the next level. Let's dig into it. What's up people, it's Clint on behalf of Airbit and I'm here today to show you some of my favorite tricks in Logic Pro. I've been Team Logic for a while now and there's some things that I just really love about it and I wanna share those with you today. So without further ado, let's hop on Logic and get to it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you is how to use Sidechain in a stock Logic plugin so that you can balance your 808s and kicks or your bass and kicks so that when your kick comes through, your, your 808 moves out of the way and you don't have like that low end competition going on between your bass and your kick. So let's dig into it. It's gonna be super dope. Logic actually has some really great stock plugins. Um, so um, this, is, this is the track here. I'll play just a, a couple bars of the track. Then I'll go ahead and just mute all the music and only have the drums. So usually when I'm mixing, I just like to have, you know, just hear the drums. I always start with the drums um, so I can hear what's going on on that low end and then build off of that. So right here I have the 808 um, and this is the track that I'm going to add the compressor on and then I'll do the side chaining from this compressor. So we'll go add our plug in. Um, so usually this is just going to be under dynamics. Then you'll go to compressor, select stereo. And then here you have some a, a few different options. I'm going to go with the classic VCA. This particular plugin is actually emulating the DBX 160, which historically has been known to be good for drums and just bringing out that punch in drum mixes. So I'm going to use this one. Um, I think it does a really good job and it has this side chain feature here. Um, so in the upper right hand corner, Corner, you'll see where it says side chain and it it defaults to internal so what you want to do you want to select internal and then you want to go to audio and then depending on what you titled your track it'll show up here mine is titled kick and I want to select you know you want to select whatever track your kick is on um, so that it side chains so I'm going to select kick here and then let's just play it to see where we are and then we'll go in and make adjustments Okay. So if we select graph, you see meter and then you see graph. This is actually going to show you every time your kick hits. Now that it's side chain to this 808, um, you're going to see every time it hits. So let's check it out. So you can see it's kind of moving there. Now, if we want it to be more, if we want the kick to come through stronger, we can adjust this ratio and this threshold. I'm gonna go ahead, turn this threshold down. So you can really hear it there. And then I'm gonna turn the compressor, compression up. And also you want to disable auto gain. I don't like the auto gain, like it's adding extra volume that I honestly just don't want. So I'm going to turn that off so it's not as distorted. Yeah. And you can play around with this. There's no right or wrong way. It's kind of, you just adjust it to taste. Now I can even turn the 808 up a little bit. and know that, that that kick is still gonna come through. I can even go e extreme with it so that it turns the 808 all the way down. So yeah, so that's how you side chain your 808s and kicks and it leaves it leaves room for the kick to come through without competing with the 808, but you still have that low end of the 808 coming through and it'll really clean up the low end on your mixes. And this is how you do it with a plugin that already comes in Logic Pro. All right, so the second tip I wanna show you is how to create what's called a track stack in Logic Pro. Um, it's a dope feature and it pretty much allows you to sum, you know, whatever group of sounds you want into one track and then you 
you can control the volume, the mute, the solo, plugins, all that stuff from that one track. I like to use it personally for my drums, so I'm gonna show you how to create a track stack. So here I have my drum sounds. I'm gonna start with the 808. I'm gonna click Shift and then click on the last track, which is the hi-hat track. That's gonna select everything. Um, and then I'm gonna right click and go down to create track stack. And then you have two options. You have the folder stack and then you have the summing stack. The, the, the summing stack. I'm gonna use the summing stack because that stack allows you to apply plugins and things like that. And that's what we wanna do, especially for this, this drum bus mix that we're creating here. All right, so that creates that sum. You can go in and rename it, you know, whatever you want. So now I have all my drums under this one track. So I can mute it all that dope stuff. Now, what I like to do is add a couple plugins just to glue the drums together. So I'll go ahead and add those. Let's see, we do that. And Smack Attack. Then I'll use a drum. I think it was like a drum loop friendly preset. Yeah. Okay. And then I pretty much just use this to just kind of glue everything together. So yeah, so that's how you create a track stack and then you can throw, you know, whatever plugins you want. You can do this for vocals, you can do this for whatever sounds you want to just group in a thing and, you know, have it have it apply all those same plugins. Even if you wanted to add like some reverb or delay, you only have to do it on this one track and then all those sounds that are within that stack uh, will have that reverb, that delay, that plugin effect, whatever you're using it for. Okay, so the next tip I wanna show you is how to do the tape stops slash slow down effect in Logic Pro is super dope. And honestly, I probably overuse it because I love it. But I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's super dope and it's super easy. So first things first, you can only do this on an audio track. So I'm gonna export this as an audio file because right now this is MIDI. This is just one of the guitar sounds. Okay, so I'm gonna create an audio. So I'm just going to, um, let me see, I'm gonna bounce in place and then just create a new track. And then we'll just name this guitar tape stop. So we know what we're looking at. And then I'm gonna mute the, the source, which is this MIDI file, the original joint. So we're not hearing both at the same time. All right, so now we have this audio. So what we wanna do now to create this stop effect so I'm gonna just cut this in half because this is where the loop is. Do a Command T to splice it really quick, and then up here, when you go to the up the like the upper half of an audio region, that's when you see this little icon change, right? So that's where you're gonna do the tape stop. So drag this back, and now it's originally like you know to fade the volume of the track, right? So if I play it now. It just fades out. But if you f do that and then right click it, you have this option to select slow down. So you wanna click slow down and now that's gonna give you that tape stop effect. So you can adjust it however, you know, however long or however short you want. It could be super short. And that's it. That's how you do the tape stop slash slow down effect in Logic Pro. I told you it was like super easy. It's like a 20 second tutorial. Okay, so this next feature is probably one of my favorites because I'm always working on alternate versions of tracks for TV and film and things like that. So a lot of times if I'm doing revisions, I want to make sure I'm saving each and every session in case I have to go back to a previous revision because they want something from that. So I like to keep track of everything and Logic makes it really, really easy with 
this alternative version feature that they have. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And the reason I love it is because it keeps everything neat and inside one session file. So you don't have like multiple session files and copies of session files and renames and all that stuff. You still open up the main session file and then you can access all these alternative versions. So right now we're in the main one, right? So we go to file and then you want to go to project alternatives. And then this is where we'll create a new alternative. So click on that and then you can name it whatever you want. So we'll call this new Q version two and then we'll save the original one. And then once it finished saving it, you're going to be in the one you just created. So at, you can see at the top, the top of your logic window, it'll say new Q version two or whatever you name your session. And then I always just like to hit save again because I'm kind of addicted to it. So now that we have that, you can go back in your project alternatives and see you have the original one, the tutorial, the V2, and literally all of these saved inside just one session. So it's just clean, it's neat, keeps everything in one place. And I absolutely love it. You know, if you're, you know, you just want to try something, but you don't want to mess up what you already have. This is a perfect feature to use. And then if you want to take it a step further and say, I don't know, say you just, you had some inspiration in the middle of a session and you want to create a whole new beat, you can still save a new alternative just to quickly create a session and then export that alternative as its own logic project. So then that will create, you know, a, a separate file from this file that you're working on now. So super cool. Love the flexibility. You can even go in and edit, you know, and rename alternatives and things like that, or just remove them all together. So a really, really dope feature in Logic Pro 10. Okay. So for this tip, I'm going to show you how you can easily change the tempo of audio files within your session. Sometimes if you have an artist or someone asking you to maybe bump the BPM up, you know, five or 10 BPMs, and you have all your stems out as audio, it's not as easy to do as if you had, you know, MIDI files. So if you have MIDI, you can easily just change the tempo. We can bump it up to 165. And it's no problem or we can change it to 145 and it's, it's just no issue it's seamless right but if you have audio that can definitely present an issue so i'm going to take one of these guitars and i'm going to bounce it in place as an audio file so that you can see exactly how to do this within logic this has been a lifesaver for me because sometimes again like you're asked to change the tempo and you may have something you know that you might have recorded a live bass you know it's it's not midi so it takes a little bit more you know to get that tempo changed if if not completely re-recording the whole thing over and you don't want to do that so here we have an audio file Okay, so if we change the tempo to 165 you're gonna see this audio file go like way off So that audio file is still playing at 155 when the rest of our track is 165. So to easily change that, we're going to go, actually, it looks like I'm all, I was already in flex mode. So this is what your normal view would look like. But then now you want to enter into flex mode. So let's select that track. Let's hit command F. And then that's going to bring up flex mode. You'll see this drop down menu appear. And what we're going to do is change this to um, from mono to poly. And it's going to analyze the transients, which will allow us to then change the tempo and it's going to go ahead and change tempos along with our MIDI files as well. So let's go ahead, change this tempo to 165 again. And as you can see, everything is staying locked on that grid and let's play it. So that's perfect. Even if we slowed it down, it's still going to stay locked in. So let's check this out. So yeah, so perfect. Now it can't be too extreme. If you go like 20 BPMs up, like it may start to distort the sound or just sound weird. Um, but this is great for, you know, those, those nice little quick BPM changes where it's not like a drastic change. So yeah, hopefully this helps. This has definitely saved me as a producer and going back into old sessions and hopefully it'll do the same for you. So those are five of my favorite Logic Pro tips and tricks. Hopefully you found them useful and helpful. If you did, definitely let us 
us know. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, join the Arabic community on Discord because it's pretty much full of a bunch of dope people that hang out and talk all things dopeness. I am out and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.